नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्रायशु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टी जेद presentation for all the online devotees and today since we are discussing in temple we have got few devotees sitting here as hare krishna so ab sabka swagat hai so let us revise we are discussing ishopanishad which is a knowledge which is going to bring us nearer to supreme personality of god so we have covered till shloka fine now so let us revise what we have done in it till now so in introduction we have seen that there are four defects that we have and so we need the vedas that vedas give us universal and axiomatic wisdom vedic knowledge is superior to the pratyaksha and anuman pranam how krishna or to know krishna vedas is the only way krishna is the ultimate goal of the vedas and how what is the history of vedas then we have seen how the whole ishopanishad is distributed up to shloka 6 3 it is about living in harmony with ishwara there are two shloka 8 it is how ishwara has to be understood by spiritual vision then we will understand what is the right and wrong vidya then right and wrong upasana and finally we will be make giving prayers for the ishwara to reveal himself invocation om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnam udachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnam eva avashishyate the personality of god it is perfect and complete and because he is completely perfect all emanations from him such as this phenomenal world are perfectly equipped as complete wholes whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself because he is the complete whole even though so many complete units emanate from him he remains the complete balance so here we are understanding how god is complete absolute truth how material world is also complete how human form offers the complete facility how self gratification that we are engaged in is an illusory completeness and how devotional service is the real completeness in the first shloka ishavasyam idam sarvam yat kichit jagatyam jagat tena tyaktena bhunjita magrudha kasya svidadanam everything animate or inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the lord one should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself which are set aside as his quota and one should not accept other things knowing well to whom they belong then we have seen the uh, in this particular shloka the glory of vedic knowledge how the lord is proprietor of everything how there is quota in nature for everyone how human possession also has a quota in earth how there is a quota in diet and how we should be living according to ishavas then the second shloka asurya naam te loka अंदेन तेन समाव्रता तमस्ते प्रेत्या भी गच्छन्ती ये के च आत्मा हनु जना हा The killer of the soul, whoever he may be, must enter into the planet known as the worlds of the faithless, full of darkness and ignorance. So here we are understanding about how karma bandhan causes death, how li- human life offers liberation through a karma, how Vedas lead ultimately to a karma. how we have to begin by bringing krishna into sense gratificatory life how without krishna everything is vain and how we have to ensure that we make all entrusms into karma yoga then shloka number 3 purvan eva hi karmani jidi vishesha shatam chama evam tvaina anyathe ato asti na karma lipyate nare when may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continuously goes on working in that way for that sort of work will not bind him to the law of karma there is no alternative to this way for man so here we are understanding who is a demon who is atmaha soul killer how we have to liberate the soul and not kill it how if we don't use human facilities the higher facilities which this life is giving to us then we'll have to live a life which is worse than that of animals and then in the next life we'll have to go to hell how even if you fail in liberating soul still the results are glorious so if you succeed then nothing can be better than that. how modern politicians act as demons 
and how we can solve all problems for it. Then in shloka number four, we understood ane jad ekam manaso javiyo nae nad deva apnuvan purva marshata tad dhavato anyan atteti tishthat tasmin apomata vrishvav dadati. Although fixed in his abode, the personality of God is swifter than the mind and can overcome all others running. The powerful demigods cannot approach him. Although in one place, he controls those who supply the air and brain. He surpasses all in excellence. So in this shloka, we have understood how absolute truth cannot be understood by speculation. How revelation helps understand God and his energies. How energies are not different yet different. How as we are limited, we can understand unlimited only through his revelation. How we have to play our part and then we'll be given the understanding to understand Krishna properly. Then we came to the next shloka. That is shloka number 5. So here we understood Tad ejati tatna ejati tad dure tad vantike Tad anantarasya sarvasya tadu sarvasya asya bahyataha. The Supreme Lord walks and does not walk. He is far away, but he is very near as well. He is within everything and yet he is outside everything. So here we are seeing how Lord is inconceivable. How absolute truth is far yet near. What is the science of deity worship? How he is nirguna yet saguna. And how the Lord pervades everything yet is separate. Om Agyanti Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Litam Yena Tasme Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamlam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ramunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadway Savadhutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vitam Sham Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Veda Taswami Nitinamine Namaste Sarswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatade Shatarine Jashi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. So, at the lotus feet of Jagannath, Valdav, Subhadra, Maya, Sudarshan, Bhagwan, Radha, Vrindavan, Chandra, Panchatattvas, Gaur, Nitai, Balaji, Bhagwan, Narsiya, Bhagwan, Vrinda, Devi, everyone in the Parampara, Srila Prabhupada, uh, for my obeisances. And I request that with your blessings, with blessings of the devotees here and the Lordships, I am able to discuss the next shloka appropriately. So we are getting into a situation where we are now trying to understand how we have to understand Krishna from a spiritual angle or how spiritual vision is important for understanding Krishna. So that is where our discussions proceed further. We have seen how Krishna is supreme, how he is inconceivable, how he is showing exactly opposite characteristics at the same time which is possible only for Krishna and no one else because finally he is the creator and only the creator knows why the creation is made for and that is where all our discussion will be going on today on this sixth shloka. So let us see the shloka Yeh tu sarvani bhutani Atmani evan anupashyati Sarvabhuti shucha atmanam tatona vijugap gupsate. So, what it means is, he who systematically sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord, who sees all living entities as his parts and parcels, and who sees the Supreme Lord within everything, never hates anything or any being. 
यस्तु सर्वानि भूतानि आत्मानि एव अनुपश्यति सर्वभूतेषु च आत्मनं ततो न विजुगुप्सते सी फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड्स हियर सर्वानि भूतानि ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज एंड हाउ दे हैव टू बी सीन दे हैव टू बी सीन एज आत्मानि एव इन रिलेशनशिप शिप टू सुप्रीम गॉड so it is said here that anyone who is able to see any everything and anything in relationship to krishna for all the living entities are able to see krishna in all the living entities sarva bhuteshu there also look at the atmanam that is the super soul that person can no longer hate it because He has developed that vision wherein he is seeing everyone, everyone as Krishna. And if everyone is Krishna, how can you hate him? He is your Param Pita Parameshwar. Can any child hate his father or mother? Absolutely not possible. And since we are seeing our father in everyone, we stop hating everyone. So when Rupa Ji is discussing in this particular. chapter he is going to talk, touch upon certain aspects like who is karishth adhikari who is madhyam adhikari who is uttam adhikari and what is the difference between false and real so what this shloka is talking about is about a mahabhag that is we have to reach to that level where we are able to see everything in relationship to krishna and how do we reach that level how do we reach the mahabhag stage it starts from our journey as a karishta adhikari so we all were and maybe i am still a karishta adhikari we go to places of worship and there we worship the lord shivs the deities as per the scriptural injunctions unfortunately when we are into this stage what happens is we think that okay god is there but where god is there only in temple or whatever is the place of worship so you cannot ascertain what is the position in devotional service and you cannot even understand who are those great personalities who have realized the supreme Lord. what you are able to do is only follow the routine formulas and at times we also fight among ourselves because we try to prove that what we are doing the devotional practice that we are following is better than that and this unfortunately is the reason for unrest all over the world everyone wants to become religious but no one wants to reach the uttam adhikari or the mahabhagavat stage everyone keeps themselves limited to the kanishta adhikari stage and they keep on quarrel while well, ideally what we have to see is look everywhere and see the lord every so it is said that these karishta adhikaris are actually materialistic devotees and they just want to somehow or the other transcend these material boundaries and try to reach the spiritual level but because of their faults because of the limitations in their thought process in their practice they do not succeed those who succeed those who keep trying those who keep perceiving they slowly elevate to the madhyam adhikari level now the moment you reach madhyam adhikari level you are able to understand the four aspects properly who is supreme lord who are the devotees of the lord who are the innocent who have no knowledge of the lord and who are the atheist who have no faith in lord and hate those in devotional service and since they are able to differentiate these four classes of people they also behave differently to them so we adore the lord because he becomes the object of love for those who are devotees those who are in devotional service we try to befriend them those who are innocent we try to preach to them and awaken the dormant love of god in them and for the atheists or those who deride the name of the lord we avoid them. because finally this is how 
you can safeguard your bhakti at least because finally our bhakti being safe is also equally important then only we can reach to the next level and become achieve the ultimate objective of our life which is krishna prem and after moving into the madhyam adhikari stage we reach the uttam adhikari stage where we are able to see everything in relation to supreme we do not discriminate even between the atheist and the theist because we saw that everything is part and parcel of god so practically speaking there is not a difference between a brahmana or a dog on the street because both are jiva jiva unsha but because they are engaged in different bodies due to their previous lives they are different so what we understand at the uttam adhikari level is yes this brahman particle of the supreme lord here in the human life has done less mistakes he has not misused the independence and so he has got this life but that one in that body of a dog he has misused the independence and therefore he is punished by the laws of nature so he is captured in the form of a dog so these people understand this difference and so they try to do good to both of them so they get misled by the material bodies but are attracted by the atma or the parmatma which is there in all these bodies and that is where we have to be careful because not everyone can be uttam adhikari but you find people trying to imitate the uttam adhikari especially the philanthropist so propa ji says that they try to uh, flout oneness or fellowship but they are actually false because the actual universal brotherhood can be learned only from uttam adhikari and not from foolish persons who do not understand the individual soul or the parmatma which dwells every and so we have to be very very careful about this philanthropy roji talks about anupashyati anupashyati he says that we should be able to observe and systematically see so what this means is that we must follow the previous acharyas the gurus and that is where this anupashyati word becomes important anu means to follow and pashyati means to observe so we should not see things as we see with our naked eye but as are shown by the previous acharya because of the defects of the material body which you have seen in the introduction part itself the four defects the eyes cannot see anything properly we cannot see anything properly unless we get the knowledge or we are hearing about it from a superior source and the highest source as we have seen is what vedas the vedic wisdom which is spoken by lord himself and these vedic truths are coming in parampara because it was spoken to lord brahma from brahma to narada from narada to vyasa and vyasa to his many disciples and same we have got by mercy of shrila prabhupa and guru ma and that is the knowledge that we have to be talking about and following that is anupashyat so this it comes very important that we follow this system properly otherwise there are so many parampara so many difficult things everyone wants to write his own commentary and then we bring about so many versions of vedic literature But the best and the most perfect is Shrimad Bhagavatam, which is the natural commentary on Vedas, and also Bhagavad Gita because it was spoken by Lord Himself. Bhagavat Gita, the singing of Lord or the song of God. So these are the most important scriptures, and anything which is written which is contradictory to Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam is anathema. and if you see the upanishads vedanta sutra advaita bhagavata bhagavad gita everywhere the conclusion is that krishna is the supreme personality of god 
and that is where there is a complete agreement and so we should not try to come to any conclusion about vedas without getting the information from parampara a parampara who believe in the god his diverse energies as they are explained here in hd shobhish so coming to bhagavad gita 18.54 there also krishna says he talks about brahmapu that is a liberated platform wherein we can become uttam adhikari devotee as the every living being as our brother unfortunately this is something which is missing in today's world and everyone is running after material and those who try to imitate these outward body just so that we can get name we can get fame or some rewards but we don't serve the spirit soul that person can be only doing karma and he'll have to suffer for that he'll not get the original knowledge of the dhatmic world and that is why uttam adhikari becomes very important because for him the material aspect is automatically so so if you see if you were to say classify between uttam adhikari madhyam adhikari and kanishta adhikari on the basis of faith and knowledge a uttam adhikari has faith and he also has a knowledge a madhyam adhikari has a faith but he lacks the knowledge and kanishta adhikari he lacks faith as well as so this particular shloka is also talking about oneness but oneness when it comes on the bodily platform is false because there is bodily diversity but there is unity in the form of spiritual spark so the spiritual spark this so we have to realize the spiritual unity and that is true so that is the difference when it comes to oneness nowadays we hear a lot about communism capitalism caste system and there are struggles which are happening amongst them so we have communists in say russia the capitalists in the western countries the caste system in certain nations so it becomes important for us to understand on the background of this shloka what they are standing for so if you see communism through communism we are trying to impose artificial material equality the government owns everything and the government distributes everything equally but then that is artificial because what happens is those who have got different talents they are not rewarded and since everyone is getting everything as per the requirements basic necessities people become lethargic and because there are so many people who are lethargic the productivity is less so people live in scarcity and so they are always dissatisfied those who follow capitalism will see here that it's the wealth which determines the position and power even in our country nowadays we find that those who are trying to bring about an economic revolution who talk about revolution so talk about economic growth they are just helping those wealthy to be in a position of power and those who are having the wealth they exploit the need the best example is we require something someone wants to get into that particular business line he comes in he starts giving everything free and the moment we become used to it the rates are increased multiple because now getting out of the habit becomes difficult that is how this needy gets exploited because the situation of supply and need demand and supply that gets manipulated so there is controlled competition as well and so it results into insecurity 
everyone is running after money so everyone is dissatisfied no one understands that everything belongs to ishavas and when it comes to the caste system here actually the spiritual equality of all people is integrated with the relative material diversity so when prabhupad ji you are if you see the shrimad bhagavata or even krishna in bhagavad gita is talking about the varnashrama system he is talking about everyone engaging themselves according to their nature according to what they feel happy with at the moment you are engaged actively you work diligently happily and the society gets the maximum benefit and that is where the underlying principles of varnashrama become important that spiritually everyone is equal but materially everyone is different and how it gets determined it does not get determined on the basis of birth a certain vested interests are trying to spread throughout the nation no nowhere manusmriti or any of the literature is talking about anyone getting into a position of say shudra or kshatriya or vaishya on the basis of birth no it is on the basis of one's nature so even a person who is born in a shudra family can become a brahmana and a person in the born in the family of a brahmana can turn out to be a shudra or a vaishya that is where spreading of the real knowledge of the vedas spreading of what krishna wants become important and so we need to see everything according to shastra your shastra has only one message that everything belongs to krishna he is the creator the one who understands this becomes liberated from the bondage of maya illusion and the vision of such liberated person is truly beneficial so at times we see uh, there are graphs which are done those going up and those going down it is down so the moment we see something going up we know there is a recession but it is observation or we are not seeing black hole but we still understand black hole that the light rays are shifted so there is a black hole there and that becomes a mistake because we think that seeing is believing and so it it is mentioned by prabhupad as a permanent progress stop intellectually as well as behavior so what is the way out the way out is very simple that we believe in we follow what the shastras have been talking about and what do the shastras say the shastras are having a simple message ved ek vakyata so the scripture is only form there is ek vakyata multi level message seem contradictory to the uninformed but they are complementary the moment we are well in so if someone today has for the first time joined the class and we have said that lord can walk as well as he cannot walk or we say lord is far away yet he is far near he would have been confused because he is uninformed but those who have attended the previous class or the introductory part of the session today they would have understood that this is something which is proving the supreme nature of lord how he is inconceivable so the statements are actually complementary and they are not contradictory and shastra has this message only for all of us this is where the shloka becomes all the more important yas sarvani bhutani atmani eva anupashyati sarva bhuteshu cha atmanam tato na vijugupsate he who systematically sees everything in relationship to the supreme lord who sees all living entities as his parts and parcels and he sees the supreme lord within everything never hates anything or any being that is what we have to understand 
that is the vision that we all have to work upon and develop only those who reach to this stage are able to actually satisfy krishna and that is what we have learned that is what krishna has said to us but the problem is we don't take it serious if you talk of modern scientist albert einstein he used to say one cannot solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it so the problem with all of us is this material understanding material bondage and our consciousness is completely material right and that is why we face these problems so if you are looking at real solution then what it required is a change in consciousness but we have to have faith in the foundation and then desire is the key in bhagavad gita 17.3 krishna has said that living entity is composed of faith he says sattva anurupa sarvasya shraddha bhavati bharata shraddha ayom purusho ya yat shraddha sa eva sa o son of bharat according to one's existence and the various modes of nature when it involves a particular kind of faith the living being is said to be of a particular faith according to the modes he has it so the faith is the foundational necessity in order to progress in any field whether material or spiritual and the knowledge of whom to place one's faith can be known by buddhi by discrimination by reason the faith in the lord and scriptures the lord has manifested is necessary for gaining solution to the problems of otherwise we are always going to be suffering from the threefold miseries the adhyatmika adi bhautika and the adi daivika klesha so it is very necessary that we approach law that is where bhagavad gita has given us quite simple steps of how to do it we are not human beings having spiritual experience but we are spiritual beings having human experience this is the most important aspect to be remembered dei nosmi yatha dehe kaumaram yavanam jara tatha dehantara prapti tatra namuyati as the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age the soul similarly passes into another body at death a super person is not bewildered by such a change and the moment we understand this we'll get this vision we'll have proper anupashyati krishna says that we are part and parcel of krishna in bhagavad gita 15 chapter he says this mam eva aunsha jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana manashashtani indriyani prakruti sthani karshati the living entities in this condition world are my eternal fragmental parts due to condition life they are struggling very hard with the six senses which include the mind just see all the jeevas are fragmental parts of krishna and we have to look at them accordingly then we will not have any kind of a problem and why are these jivas here they are here because of that desire to enjoy independent of krishna this is also something which krishna himself has confirmed in bhagavad gita 7.27 इच्छाद्वेश समुत्थेन द्वन्द्व मोहेन भारत सर्वभूतानि सम्मोहम सर्गे यान्ति परंतपा उस्थान ऑफ भारत और कंकर और ऑफ द एनिमीज ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज आर बोर्न इनटू डिल्यूजन बिविल्डर्ड बाय ड्यूअलिटीज अराइजन फ्रॉम डिजायर एंड एंड वी आर स्ट्रगलिंग हियर विद आवर माइंड एंड सेंसेस बिकॉज़ ऑफ द एसोसिएशन ऑफ द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल so it is important that we understand these aspects we follow we anupashyati whatever is mentioned by lord 
in the scriptures and reach a platform wherein we are able to place Krishna in the center of our lives. And for that, it is important that we understand the Shastra, not with our mundane knowledge, because it is said that it is just like a licking the closed honey bottle. It's only when we surrender, when we have complete Sharnagati, we can understand the Vedic literature, especially the Bhagavad Gita. That is how Arjuna also got the knowledge. And so he says in Bhagavad Gita towards the end, Nashtumoha Smriti Labda Tvat Prasada Ayuchyuta Tito Asmi Gata Sandeha Karishe Vachanam Tavaha so Arjuna said, my dear Krishna, O oh, infallible one, Achyuta, Nashta Moha, my illusion is now gone. Smruti Labda, I have regained my memory. How? Tvat Prasadan, by your mercy. Sthitoha Asmi, I am now fun. Gata Sandeha, free from doubt. Karishe Vachanamatava, and I am prepared to act according to your instructions. This was possible for Arjuna because he surrendered completely to Krishna. And while the discussion started as a friend, it reached to a stage. In the 11th canto, 11th chapter, wherein Arjuna said that you are my guru and I am your student. So please guide. It is with this mode of humility, complete sharnagati, that we need to approach the Shiksha Guru, the Guru Maharaj, the Parampara, and understand the true knowledge as it is. And then we will be in a position to actually understand completely and reach to the stage wherein we can be called Yes to Sarvani Bhutani, Atmani Anupashyati, Sarva Bhuteshucha Atmanam, Tatona Vijugupsate. And then we'll have no hatred in this society. Everyone will respect and love everyone because everyone is seen as Paramatma. And that is the real peace formula which Prabhupada has given to us through Ishokrishan.